Yo, what up, y'all? It's the Ronnie Ray Show. We back with some more segments. Some more segments. Same rigmarole kind of, you know what I'm saying? We got off my chest. We got, remember, the classics. We got random lists. We got this or that. And also, we got the shout-out portion. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Subscribe now. Subscribe now. Tell a friend. We about to get out. Let's go. All right. Off my chest today, off my chest today. This dude is not foreign to this show. And I say that because he's from Chicago, from where I'm from. He's actually one mile this way from me right now, where he grew up. Mr. Kanye West has lost his mind again. How many times he going to lose his mind? But if they take my suggestion, you wouldn't have all these crazy shenanigans. Get Kanye West a no man. He need a big dude. Former NBA, former NFL dude to be at the end of the back of the room like, hey, shut the fuck up. We need that guy. I'll play that guy. I'll be the middle guy. I'll do the night shift. I don't give a damn. He needs somebody because dude has lost his group. And I say, yo, he's doing that on purpose. Either he's really, really, really crazy or he's smart as hell. He's the smartest dude ever. He knows how to set y'all up because every time he say something outrageous, an album comes out. George Bush don't care about black people. Late registration. Harriet Tubman did nothing for a black man. Yay. He married Kim Kardashian. Yeezus. Man, this shit here, White Lives Matter, man, he dropping a triple album. He is dropping a triple album because he is trying to go and be above and beyond. All the bullshit. I'm top of this one. Watch. Kanye West, man, it's getting old, man. It's getting old. We, 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 we figuring you out. You got you to gotta do something. I, I suggest you just stop music for a while. You stop music and keep selling them fucked up looking at clothes and, and just sit back and relax because you the mastermind. You, you dope. You know, you might be a little out there, but you drop some bomb shit. Take some time off and come back and hit them five years later with the bomb album, the masterpiece. And I think it'd be done because he knows, he knows all the white shit that he's doing as long as his music is dope, it doesn't matter. It doesn't, it erase all that bullshit. You almost forgot the George Bush line when I just said it, right? He said that shit, 2005. Sinatra said, the best revenge is great success. That's what he doing. He playing y'all. But it's getting old. It's getting old because he's going to get more known for all this controversy crap than the great music maker he is. So Kanye, chill out, relax. Get you a no man. I'm down. You pay me $10,000 a day. I'll be. For you, I'm going to let you finish. But Beyonce had one of the best videos of all time. Sit the fuck down. Shut the fuck up. I'll be all in. It'll be base all kind of shit. I'll live waste 15 hours a day, dog. I'll be ready. Anything, dog. Body slam your ass when you need it. You ain't got the answers, man. You ain't got the answers. Okay, here we go. Remember the classics. Remember the classics. I'm going there. I'm going hip hop this time. I'm going hip hop. I'm going September 19th, 2006, when my man from the west side of Chicago dropped the classics. He got classics, but he dropped the classic. Lupe Fiasco. Food and liquor. Food and liquor. First of all, Lupe is one of the most underrated rappers of all time. He had probably the best intro to any rapper other than Tupac with same song and Nas with the barbecue cut. When he did Touch the Sky with Kanye, I'm like, who the fuck is this guy? Who is that? Who is that? You know what I'm saying? Luffy on third. He did, he did some metaphors. There was like five metaphors in this. I, don't, I can't even rap it. One of the best rappers ever to me. I, I say he dropped that classic, man. Executive produced by my guy, by the hoe, by the Jigga Man. Jay-Z co-signed this guy. Jay-Z retired. Like, who, who was that? Put him on this. I got that. Put my name on it. Jay -Z, that was one of Jay-Z's first tracks. He's on the album. He's on pressure. And big homies out of retirement. I'm like, oh, Jay about to drop a verse? Oh, you know you got to be the shit if Jay-Z like, you know what? I'm going to rap again, man. I'm going to rap again because you, 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 you're doing it. man. I want to get on this. And he came back with Kingdom Come and nobody really cared. But he dropped American Gangster, And I'm like, yeah, he's back. But back to Lupe, man. Tracks on there, the real dun 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 dun. Food and liquor, yeah. My mom said she wanted something. Ah! He got gotcha on there. The doo -doo -doo. Dude, that shit go hard. I didn't like that song at first. I played let the album play um, a few years ago. I'm like, yo, this is a cut. 
Daydreaming with old Jill Scott, got the Grammy for it. He was just being him, and that's the cool shit. It wasn't no extra. He wasn't out there starting fights. He didn't get shot. None of that. I'm just going to be a rapper, man. He like the backpack rapper shit was going on around here. So he was like the damn the leader of those dudes because he was a nerdy looking cat. But dude had bars. Favorite track, Pressure, like I said, Jay Z. Kick Push, the first single off that joint. Oh, that went on. I saw that video. Like, that's, that's dude from the Kanye joint. And then. I ain't know he's from Chicago, then I see the video. He from the shot too? He from the shot? Man, I was all in right there. But one of, one of the greatest rap songs of all time on this album to me. I'll probably be the only one standing in that little box. <laughs> What's the greatest rap song of all time? I'm over here with this song by myself. It's called He Said, She Said. Man, that shit hit so hard, man. I, I, I was playing it because I like the hook. And I'm listening to it, I'm listening to it. If you haven't heard, it was about this guy in jail. His his uh, wife was talking to him at first, and the first verse. Then the second verse, the kid is talking to him. And he drops the same verse, but he changes like seven words. I'm like, he just said the same, he just, who did, who does that? I ain't never heard no shit like that. It, it took me like fucking nine times. <laughs> I'm playing it because I liked it. I can't. I can't, I don't give up on me. That's the old God. I'm playing that shit when I get off this movie. That's one of my favorite rap songs of all time. That goes on the list for me. That's up there, dude. I say top five. Even. If I do a list on that, that'll be one. And I know y'all disagree on that because y'all don't like nothing I do. The album's a classic, but Lupe is terribly underrated as a lyricist. I think he probably got a little too controversial for people because he calls the president a terrorist. And he kind of like, hey, where <laughs> the record sales go? Man, he, he's a legend, dog. And if it rap had Hall of Fame, he should definitely get first ballot, man, because this dude is dope. All right, y'all, here we go. Random list, random list. We go on TV this time. Television, people. Television. The two. We go on to him, man, because I, I forgot how dope he was. Since he did that crazy stuff in March to Chris Rock, I was like, man, I'm done with this guy. But I'm like, he brought so much joy in the world. Will Smith can have a bad day. So this is about Will Smith's TV show, The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. The top 11 episode of Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Now, there's so many. This is going to be hard. And I know I'm going to get the backlash with some of this, but I don't care. We, we're going to talk about some of y'all, too. So I'm kind of inviting it. So I want to, I want to see it. But this, I, I did it justice. So sit back, relax, and get to the list. I'm going to get to the list. Number 11, the finale. The finale kind of had me right here, man. The finale, when you know, two-part finale. And, you know, they did all the stuff in the house. And then, you know, they moved. For some reason, they were just up and moved to New York. And he dropped being the judge. And, yeah. I don't know if that should be number 11. <laughs> but it's number 11 now. I ain't changing it, man. We'll wind up staring there. So number 11, the finale episode. Number 10, um, Blood is Thicker Than Mud episode. It's the Raiders sellout episode when Will and Carlton decide to join a fraternity. And they made, there was an all-black fraternity, and they made Carlton do all the, all the hard stuff. And Carlton gave an epic speech at the end. I was like, yo, that's what's up, man. You trying to trip me. Why you trying to trip me up? I went through the same struggles you do, and why you trying to trip me up? It wasn't there. I'm going to try to see if I can get you out of here. I'm like, man, that's <laughs> good scene, man. Good scene. And that was my man from South Central in, in, in Colors. We cared about him in South Central. I care less for him. That's how you're a good actor. You do one thing, I like you. Then you do something else, I can't stand your ass. So, hell, Glenn Plum, his name. So, number 10, blood sticking in mud. Number nine, I'm going to say a pilot episode. The pilot episode, we didn't even know what was coming on. I had no clue. I remember being <laughs> in the car, and he was on the radio on Tom Jordan the morning show. I'm in Chicago. He's like, yeah, it's tonight, man. Get ready. For the Rich Prince of Bel Air, like what? Like what? And I go home and they cut the TV on and it's him. I'm like, the dude from Parents Don't Understand got a TV show. You watch it, I'm like, damn, he he kind of he's good. You know what I mean? So to watch that, it was like, man, especially the second time I watched it, I'm laughing, and he he, he had it. The chops, it worked out. Just added on to what the Cosby Show brought, made it bigger, kind of. So um, yeah, number nine, the pilot episode. Number eight, Cold Feet, Hot Body. Yes, when Robin Givens did the guest guest uh <laughs> guest appearance on it, and I don't care what y'all say about her, man. She she took Mike Mike Tyson's money. She's always playing the bitch and shit. But man, I'ma tell you something. Robin Givens is sexy to me, man. 
She is mad sexy to me. I, I'm not like I'm not like head over heels, but if she's in the room, I'm looking at her. For some reason, probably still not, because she don't even look like that. Look like she damn near 60. She don't look like she's 60. She still look like she's like late 30s or something. The dimple on the, oh my God, that one too? She like raised up thing up, her leg, um, skirt up. So I'm like, oh my God, this is some sexy shit. I don't know, but then Long almost got cheated on again back then. It's a goddamn shame. So, number eight, cold feet, hot body. Number seven, I'm going with bank shot. Season one, bank shot. Will goes to a, a pool hall and loses the Mercedes. <laughs> so Uncle Phil and Jeffrey had to go down and get the debt back, and Uncle Phil played like he couldn't play pool. He couldn't shoot at all, and he took all the money. And then he was like, uh, all right, well, Uncle, if you want to play again, let's play again. I think I'm getting the hang of it. Okay, Uncle Phil, we got to raise the stakes. Let's go $100 a ball. $100 a ball. Okay. Jeffrey, <laughs> break out Lucille. Ah! Oh, ding, ding. You think they played the soul man? They played soul man. Oh, Phil Banks just got off on that one, man. Number six, I'm going for, if it's for the main things you gave me. That's the one with Pam Greer's on it. Pam Greer and Elise Neal are on it playing mother and daughter. And Will is dating um, Elise Neal as the daughter. And he drops off at the hotel and the daughter has her own room, but Will couldn't go in. So he's walking out and Pam Greer comes. Pam Greer is probably one of the sexiest women in history. Back in 1970, she was it. She still was hot in the 90s. She offered, she offered Will some tank. You know what I'm saying? Some, some, some smash, a smash session. And he took it. Only thing I don't like about that episode is they had the lights getting that bib on there. And and she took it easy on him. Now, you know damn well, if dark skin and Vid was there and she found out she did that with her nephew, she would have beat the shit out of fucking Pam Grier's ass. Whatever her name in the show is, did she Pam Grier in my story. So, number six, if it's for the main things you gave me. Number five, we're going a little serious, man. Number five, we're going Bullets Over Bella. Bullets Over Bella, man. Oh, God. Will get shot in the ass, you know. Will got shot in the ass. Carlton was scared of society then. He was scared. Like, he really was dumbfounded by all the stuff that was going on through all these years. So he gets into it. Now it's like real now. I gotta go get a gun. My dad's been lying to me. <laughs> he go gets a gun. Will was shot in the ass by almost paralyzed. Feels Carlton and that epic scene comes on. Give me the gun, Carlton. You hold me! Come on, Will! Never nominated for an Emmy for that, man. Never. Never. They were trying to get him that, too. They were reaching for him. Number four, lighthearted. Carlton again. 72 hours. Carlton had to stay in Compton for 72 hours. They left him there like, oh, he gonna be fucked up when he come back. You know what I mean? He ain't gonna handle himself. And he pops up and he tells him, why you playing, Prince? He, was, he had like, like a pirate and shit. Dude, because I was young, I ain't know nothing about character development. I'm like, he's he not going to pull that off. He was really, I'm like, yo, this dude got a range. I even know Silver Spoons, I'm like, eh, he's the same kid. Even though he didn't act like Carlton then, he was a square though. But he wasn't that cool. He played that real good, man. So, yo, number four is 72 hours. Carlton in the hood, man, pretty much. That's what they should have called it. Number three, uh, the butler did it. That's the title of it. But they should have called Called it the Bell Bill DeVoe episode. Cause <laughs> god damn it, man. <laughs> you didn't see it? And Bill, Uncle Phil go away on a vacation. Jeffrey's going to a butler convention. They leave the house to them. Carlton rents out the house for a video to be shot. And the people in the video are Bell Bill DeVoe. They come downstairs to see the set. Will snaps off old Carlton. Then they come out. Oh, what's up, man? They kept interrupting the video. <laughs> Third take. Will and Tyrone was in the video. What do you think you're doing? Oh, I was trying to get up to my room. Yo, yo, yo Ty, what you doing? Oh, I, I was trying to be in the video. <laughs> Number two. Oh, y'all gonna be like, really? Really, man? Dude, this episode is the first one that made me laugh, laugh. Number two. Is Deaf Poetry Society. Oh my God. Jeffrey is Raphael de la Ghetto. Man, listen to the street beat. Feel the sound pound. Force your ears. Listen. Oh, I kill you. <laughs> 
And they're like, man, dog, no, skip that. We want more. Uncle, I oh, did Jeffrey just forgot about Kenan. Cannon to the right of them. Cannon to the left of them. Callan in front of them. Valley and Dunda. <laughs> And then I saw the reunion. Jeffrey said that was his favorite episode. I'm like, hell yeah, that shit was funny. That's comedy right there. Fuck all that Carl today. Y'all know it ain't none of that shit on here. No, I'm a fan fan. I ain't, I ain't going to the go to. Good to Carl today. Man, fuck the Carl today. Honorable mentions. The honorable mentions uh, episode. Hillary gets a job is when um, <laughs> they go to the TV station and they all do it on the news. I got home late from the grocery store. Mama said, knock you out. Dude, that's funny. Viv turning 40, epic. When she was dancing, then she, she walked out of there. Everybody! Then she falls out, that shit made me laugh. Uh, Will beats up uh, Dougie. Man, it's so many. This show is epic, man. And that's how, that's how sad that is, because Will, Will done a lot, man. And that one moment, that almost ruined all this shit. And that almost ruined it for me as a big of a fan of I Am of this show. I'm like, damn, man. I forgot about how good this shit is, man. We're going to number one. And y'all know what number one is. Come on, man. You ain't got to be. This is the most talked about shit. This shit still being talked about now. Papa got a brand new excuse. Star Viverine's daddy came back after 14 years. Man, we didn't know what we was watching. We think we starting off all good, man. You know, they out and he seen him. He come to the job and he comes to the house. And, and how dare you come to my house? When Uncle Phil was mad. And I'm like, why is Uncle Phil so mad? Side note. I think they should have made Uncle Phil the big brother instead of Aunt Bill the sister. Instead of them being sisters, he should have just been the big brother, and that's why she sent them there. He cared a little more than he got the, the light skin Bill came in. He cared more to, uh, for Will than she did. So you just gonna leave out his life again? He like, hey, you think I want this? It just happened. He did it, man. That's acting, dog. Act. Will, that's one. That's Will's moment right there. Will's moment came in. Yeah, hey, the dad, dad, daddy, oh, hey, um, uh, son. Um, I'm not gonna be able to take you this time. I got a big load. I gotta get there this time, man. So I'll be back to you, man. I talk to you. I'm like, oh, it didn't change now. Yeah, he went off, man. I'm gonna tell you something, man. I'm gonna get through college without him. I'm gonna buy me a, I'm gonna marry me a fly, honey. And I ain't a whole bunch of kids. Cause ain't nobody gonna tell me I love my kids. The hell with him. Oh. Uh, and he said he was in his ear like, yo, you bullshitting. Give me the fucking line. And then when they find he said the last take, what we see is what it is. He whispered in his ear like, that's what's acting. And I got a joke about that shit. And I didn't even know what happened. I said, I say that's acting. And James Avery said that's acting. And that's fucking acting. But it was supposed to be a comedy. This shit ain't supposed to be on the list. But hey, classic stuff, man. Thank you, Will Smith. Thank you, Quincy Jones. Thank you, Benny Medina. All you guys, the cast of that show, this show is legendary. It deserves its props. It doesn't get it, though. All I hear is Martin. <laughs> All I hear is Martin. Just like, Kobe he, Bryant. Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant. Wonderful. One, arguably the best player to ever play basketball. Arguably. Yes. Because like, people have different. That's a whole other show with the GOAT conversation. Right, but right. he's right up there. If he's not number one, he's right there. I, I got him number three, but that's a whole other thing or whatever. Uh, OK. But hey, the, the question, the, the debate is this. Uh -huh. Which Kobe Bryant did you like better? Number eight or number 24? Rest in peace to both those numbers. Yeah, rest in peace. God bless the dead Kobe Bryant. You said, which one did I like better, eight or 24? Froby or like, you know, more mature Kobe? It's weird because stat-wise, eight is better. Right. right. You got more points, more games, more. It's funny. More points, more 10 and 10. What, say it again? He did 10 and 10. Yeah, he did 10 and 10. So you got like a, a nice, like good balance or whatever. But I don't know, like, number eight was more athletic, right? He was just way, way, and way more raw, right? But it's yeah. funny with number eight, his first two years were trash because of Dell Harris. Dell Harris was a terrible coach. He wouldn't play him. Kobe was the best player in practice. I'm not going to play the young guy because this is a different league. You know where dudes in the league in the 90s, they were older. It wasn't right. like the boys now, you know what I'm saying? So you got to earn your stripes. So, so even with all that being said, it might be number 24, man. Like, if you look at the artistry, like we're artists. So we mm -hmm. like the science of the game. So when Kobe used to play that, when he 
got into the mid range and his feet work that Jordan, cause like, listen, nobody's Jordan. Cause Jordan is, Jordan had the hands, the quickness, but Kobe's one dribble pull up, two dribble pull up, up and under. Remember when he played against the Knicks or whatever, and he had the 61 and he did the reverse pivot on Wilson Chandler? He turned around, yeah. Yo, turned around come on, man. Yeah. The artistry yeah. of that, man. Yeah. Like that, like, I like that more than I like number eight, but I mean, just number eight, man. He scored 62 and three quarters. Remember against the Mavs? Right? He took him out. He took, took him, him out. out. He could have went for like 90 that game. Yo, he yo, for damn 90. I think that he had 81 as number eight. And I'll right. tell you this, that Mav game, if Phil would have left him in the fourth quarter, I think he would have got 90. Yeah, that's what I just said. Yep. I yep. think he would have got 90. He, I don't know. He was just, I never seen, the only person I saw was Jordan, but Jordan looked like he was in that zone every game. You know what I'm saying, right? Like, mm -hmm. like Jordan's like, I can get whatever I want. But Kobe in that game, I was like, yo, he looks different. Like, he looked like, like that, I was like. The 81 points? No, the 62. Oh, yeah, yeah, he was trying to prove a point. Yeah, yeah he, he looked, like, yo, he looked crazy. Like, it, there was a time out here in L.A. where people were like, Kobe's playing like there's nobody on the court but him. I remember, like, say, like, it doesn't, like, does he know that there's five defenders on the court? That's a different zone. So I think it's, I, I think it's 24. Well, A was a B. A, fuck. That's incredible how you can pin somebody against themselves. I'm just, because look at the, he had more points. All he had the same scoring titles, eight and 24. No, it's probably eight. You know why? Because I'm thinking about that 2001 playoffs when they went 15 and one, he averaged 40 in the playoffs. And he's, mm. And right, and people forget he swept the West. They swept. I just the watched. West. I just watched that shit on Amazon. Right. Um, I've never seen their um, championship videos because I used to watch the Bulls. I used to get that for Christmas. It's me, my birthday every year. The <laughs> yeah, Bulls yeah. championship um, thing, but I never seen that. So I watched that just because of today. Oh. But um, yeah. So you say. So you say number number number, two, eight. number eight now. Yeah, number because, eight now. Yeah, number eight. The, and it's funny. I'm remember, I'm glad you brought up that. Oh, 2001, because what happens is when people see the finals and Shaq won those MVPs, we forget in the early 2000s, there was no center in the East. Shaq was a beast. I bet, but we all remember how tough the West was. Remember it was like forward heavy, Garnett, Chris Webber, Dirk, Tim Duncan, Duncan David Robinson, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. People forget, and people need to realize this. Kobe has a winning record against Tim Duncan in the playoffs, but we rate Tim Duncan harder, higher than Kobe. That's ridiculous. Yeah, okay. Yeah, right? Tim Duncan yeah. has a winning record against LeBron in the finals. Right. I'm not saying – I'm comparing apples to orange, but what, what I'm saying is Kobe has a winning record against Tim Duncan in the playoff. So whenever um, San Antonio saw the Lakers, they're like, shit, we – and they only lost them twice. Nine, um, was it 99? 99. Right? 99 and then, in 2004. No, 03. 03. 03. 03. No, 03. and then they lost in 2013, but Kobe was injured. He rubbed his Achilles. And we, right. had, we had weak ass Dwight Howard that had no post moves. <laughs> right? You, got uh, just, you got him back. <laughs> he came right, back. Right. I know all sides y'all put up in the city. Come save the white state. But no. No, that's beside the point. This or that. You said number eight. Okay, number eight. Guys, it's, my, it's my turn. No. Uh, I love it. I must say 24. And I'm going to tell you why I'm going to say 24. Why? Shaq wasn't there. Shaq wasn't there. Kobe was great. When you got Shaq on the team, it kind of like, you know, it doesn't, it made him play more. And I, I appreciate, I don't, I'm not a Laker fan. I am not a Laker. You will not see that in my house as much as I <laughs> give a fuck about Kobe uh, yeah. as a basketball player. Uh, but I was living there. Yeah. And they were, I, I, was, I got there in 2000, right after they won the first one. Right, right. I'm like, okay, I'm like, I got to watch this. They celebrating like my, they got our coaches. And shit, and the assistants <laughs> out here. Ron Harper right. came. Right, right. Grant's here and shit. John right. Sally even brought his fuck ass out there. I'm like, what is this? Text what? winner. Text winner is the triangle. It's the same team, but damn, Jerry right. Krause. Um, but, idiot. But I'm, like, I'm watching it and I'm like, okay, they winning. I'm, not, I'm the only one pretty much not really caring about the game. The one, the season, the one I watched was the series I watched was probably uh, the Philadelphia one because Alan Opson went off. So I was yeah. waiting for them to do it again, but they just was – they spanked the crap out of them. Dude. And the um, Sacramento one, those right. two. But I'm like, yeah, you got Shaq. Like you just said, Shaq was 
dominant. Shaq is the only big guy that you know. They and they got to the they got to the finals. Couldn't nobody beat them. Rick no. Smith, you know what no. I mean. Rick Smith didn't guard, guard Shaq. No. McKinley Mutombo couldn't guard we Shaq. Won't. And who we was the other? You don't even know who the um Jerry Collins, I think it was the no, yeah. Jersey. Aaron, remember Aaron Williams? Tom Aaron McCullough. Williams. Yeah, I said the light skin dude. Yeah. So yes. When Shaq left, when Shaq left, I got a chance to see Kobe have to do what Mike did right. before they got to the finals. Like, he like, okay, I'm the guy now. Right. Y'all want to follow me. Y'all can follow me. If y'all don't want to follow me, I'm going to roll right over you. So y'all need to come on. So to watch him score, he had like 40 points. And a whole shit, month, I mean, remember, remember, remember a whole month he had 40? Yeah, he had 40 for like about 13 games or something. And I was like, yo, this dude is killing. Like, what the? So I started watching him. And then when they started winning again, I'm like, oh, I kind of I like to see the struggle. But I like that he changed the number because it took away from all of that. So, and yeah. I think number eight went to the fadeaway too early because he still had, he's still dunking on people, right. but he was doing it too early. I'm like, dude, you still can cut to the basket. You know, it's funny because. See, so you're a Bulls fan, so you know that triangle well, right? And we forget. I and I forgot about this in the last dance. We only let Jordan go one on four. Like you have the ball on top of the key, do whatever you want, maybe for three mm-hmm. years of his career. Kobe never really had the chance because when you play in the triangle, it's a system. Right. So you get your shots on this point of the floor or whatever. So for him to get that early. That probably helped him out. Like when you said go to the fadeaway early, it was like, well, I'm in a system, so I can't. They won't let me just bring the ball up and do whatever I want. Right, right, right. Okay, you know makes I mean? sense. Makes sense. No, okay. but I do, I do agree with you. Where it's like 24, we forget. Oh, he didn't have Shaq. It's crazy because you know, for 12 years of his career, he didn't have Shaq. He only played with Shaq for eight years. That's so three. Like, yeah, so it's like Kobe's really like it's like well, he had Shaq, but it's like it wasn't even half of his career. Wow, you're right. But the championships, though. You right, the right, championship. right, right. But right, then right. the two, he, the stats probably been better if he didn't get hurt towards the end. Let me tell you if something. If he was out for damn near a whole season. Remember, he wanted to retire when he ruptured that. He was like, I'm done. They were like, no, we paid we, Spectrum. We paid Spectrum paid us a billion dollars. We got You got to come. We need you. Right. And his stats would have probably been better. He probably would have been at, like, maybe 26, 27 a game. He's at 25, which isn't bad. But, you know. There's only like eight players that scored more than him, like on average. I think seven. You know, Iverson's current. LeBron has a better average um, point score or whatever. But his stats would have probably been better. If he would, I think if he would have played early, because I remember, even though I was like 12, 13 when he came to the league, I saw him at Venice Beach when he was like, when he first came in. And they were like, oh, that's the Laker kid. The kid they're like, oh, he's at Venice Beach just playing. And I remember he killed my cousin. My cousin scored three straight points on him, and, and Kobe was like, it's done. And just to see him at 17, to be like, no, you're stop doing that move. I was like, yo, he's yelling. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> I, you know what I'm saying? Like, he, you could tell he was crazy. So, But those first two years, because we had a terrible – it was the culture. You didn't play young guys. Because right. there's no way his first year, I heard stories where it's like, yo, this dude is the next – I saw him at Long Beach Pyramid when he's playing in the summer league with Derek Fisher. They're like, mm-hmm. yo, this guy – to think now, like I'm 35, to think somebody at 17 was playing like that. I'm like, wait, how is a 17-year-old playing like this? You know what I mean? So I think his, if he would have played early, and even if he got injured, his stats would have been better. Yeah, yeah. You know I mean? so, so you're going with number eight. Number eight, number eight. Okay, I'm going 24. That's the show. That's the- All right, shout out Portia, man. Shout out Portia goes today to the place that helped me produce um, a comedy show, High Five. Um, it goes out to the Lincoln Lodge, Chicago. I appreciate these guys, man. I don't do this for clout. I don't do this for no love. Like I just want to just voice that I appreciate them. So shout out to John. Shout out to Kate. Shout out to Christian, man. There's more people that work there. My man Jarrell Scott Barnes works there. But John, Christian, and Kate are the ones I deal with the most. And it's like a home, man. I appreciate them. Uh, my guy, he, he's there all the time. He's one of the runners, and he's cool. I forget his name, though, man. That's my bad, you know. No disrespect. But they allow me to produce a show like I want to. They just get out of my way. There's no, like, you got to have this many people. Like, you got to, if you don't have people there, you still want to do the show. So, so it's definitely an education in show business. Um, it's taught me how to produce a show, um, how to keep it at a certain time, what type of level. Because High Five show can, can consist of, 
five high host the show, five high comedians every week, different, like it, local Chicago guys or sometimes some people just come into town. There's people I don't even know are like, hitting me up. Like, Ronnie, I heard your show. is dope. I'm such and such. Here's my clip or whatever. Blah, 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 blah. Like, but they gave me an opportunity to have a show. And the show started back um, 2021. I'm out. I just did a show at another club, and they didn't give me a second date on it. And like a couple of days after that, I go out. My friend Dave Carter. Dave Carter comes to town. Dave Carter has introduced me to everybody I know in show business. And he doesn't even live here. I haven't seen Dave in like eight years. He pops up. and He's like, hey, you need to see this guy at the Lincoln Lodge. And I meet him. He sees me perform. He's like, man, you want to do a show here? It'd be great. Yeah, yeah, do a show. John was like, yeah, you do a show here. Like, okay. Well, let me know what Saturday you got free. This was a Monday. He hit me on Thursday. Like, you can do it next Saturday. I'm like, damn. Put the show together. It was damn near sold out. And I'm like, yo, I got to do this every damn week. And it's been on ever since. So, shout out to everybody that's ever came. Shout out to my brother behind the camera right now. My mother that's there every week critique, critiquing everybody. So, yeah, high five comedy show, man. So, thank you to the Lincoln Lodge. It allowed me to do something I want to do. And that's probably all I need to do when I first move back. Just some something, something small like that and still handle my own biz. Because I always wanted to help out the fellow comedian, man. So... I know how hard it is. So you get a chance to rock the mic, get a little money for it, and perform. Yo, I felt like I did my part in the game. So thank you, Lincoln Lodge. Um, yeah, thank you for letting me produce the show like I want to. That's the end of the show. That is the end. Yeah, we done. Subscribe, man. Subscribe. I know y'all got some comments. Yeah, subscribe, share it. Well, all you got to do, just do that, man. We're done. We're done today. Shout out to Lamo behind the camera. And... Yeah, I'll see you next time.